The Senate during the week began the process of reenacting the Nigerian Railway Corporation Act. Now, this is to remove the bottlenecks that hinder the development of an efficient rail transport system in the country. Now, the Senate Committee on Land Transport held a public hearing in Abuja to develop a practical and well-crafted legal framework for the Nigerian Railway Corporation to enable it to meet with international best standards. Now, we had a chat with the chairman, Senate Committee on Land Transport, Senator Benga Shafa, to learn more of the proposed bill. The bill is principally about uh, the Nigerian Railway Corporation Act being amended in such a manner that we can open up our, the rail transport system to accommodate so many other factors as has been done in the developed um, world. Now, if I may pick some of the specifics, uh, one is um, in the area of um, rail construction. The bill is seeking to amend, I believe, section 20 and 21 of the existing law in order to um, bring in private investors, um, states, and uh, to, the, to some extent the local governments that have the capacity to uh, partner with the federal government and ensure that um, adequate reconstruction or realignments are done in such a manner that um, areas that have not been covered by the network can be covered at any specific time when there, there are funds you know, available. Now, distinguished Senator, would you say that the reenactment of the Railway Act is in response to the controversy over the Lagos Calabar Railway project that we saw play out during the, you know, the budgeting process that has caused you know, sort of a standoff or back and forth between the executive and the legislature? Oh, no, 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 not at all. This bill had come several times. It was, um, uh, it came in the 6th Senate. Um, it was brought up on the seventh Senate, but it didn't get to the um, level of the third reading, which we are going through now. It didn't even get through the public hearing. With this public hearing now, so many things have even been discovered from the bill that have to be corrected. And that is the essence of public um, hearing. A lot of opinions, a lot of views, a lot of expertise came everywhere. That public hearing, you will see the uh, caliber of the people, the robustness of the discussions and ideas that were put on the table, both from the private and public sectors. So what we are doing at this stage is that those areas where we need to, you know, um, work on, we've decided, and this was an idea brought by one of the participants, um, that there should be a technical committee to look at uh, the framework and uh, look at the details of that bill in such a manner that it will uh, be different from what we were operating before. It will be impactful on the ordinary Nigerian and at the same time compete with what um, is obtaining in uh, developed countries like um, China, um, United States of America, uh, Brazil, um, Britain, and um, even um, United um, Arab um, Emirates. And one of the, the problems, you know, with um, all the issues that arise when we're talking about um, a project of this magnitude, we've looked at it, it's going to cover the, the, the projects, the railway projects, particularly the Lagos Calabar and the Lagos Cano, is going to, you know, go across several states. And a project of that magnitude would cost billions and billions of naira. In this bill, is it taking? Is it going to take into cognizance the issue of funding of this project of this nature? Well, I would say yes. Indirectly, if you look at uh, the clause where um, private participation is going to be brought in, government cannot, uh, particularly at this time, cannot fund all these projects. And these projects don't come just once. Some of them you have to face out. Let me cite an example of this Lagos Calabar um, rail. 
um, you know, that project in itself has been put forward. The blueprint is not ready yet. But already the Chinese government is partnering with Nigeria in ensuring that adequate fund is, you know, provided through their, um, uh, I think it's China Exim Bank. They've asked Nigeria to come up with 15% uh, of the total cost as counterpart funding. And this 15% uh, translates to 60 billion each. The first one, Lagos Kano, the second one, Lagos Calabar. If we are able to get that uh, uh, fund in, the counterpart side of it in, then we've gone through about one third of the way. Because what it means is that the total amount of money that will be used to finish that project will be waiting for us at their own end. There are other details that have been worked in into, into this. But the beauty of this is that at the end of the day, when we are now even looking at um, how do we get our money back, how do we pay back, you know, uh, this money that we have um, borrowed, the bill has given room for concessioning. Unlike before when we leave everything to God, you know, through so, uh, to uh, the government, through subsidy. So, if you look at the totality and the uh, content and the intentment of this bill, it is a bill that has generated so much um, interest in an average Nigerian. And I'm hoping that at the end of the day, we get a robust and um, very, very, um, um, you know, good bill at the end of the day that will be passed into law and uh, our train and light rail or whatever services that has to do with the rail transport will be uh, better than what we are experiencing now. Now this is where we draw the curtains on this week's edition of A Gavel. If you have any views on any of the issues discussed, please email us on thegavel at channelstv.com. Thank you for staying with us and see you again next week.